One thing I really enjoy being part of OM is to be part of their big productions of concerts. For example, the most recent Wagner Ring Cycle and also we did the Bernstein Mass. And all these productions really require a lot of people from the orchestra to the choir and, and the audiences. So of course, because of this pandemic, you know, and the safe distancing measures, it might be difficult to keep producing these big productions. The repertoire will have to be different, you know, for more for smaller scale forces um, uh, rather than, than the big orchestra that we've always had. And uh, also the number of people in the audience, you know, you know so all of those restrictions, I think. OM has always been so diverse in the kind of things that they do, you know, um, involving singers, involving orchestra musicians, involving videographers, lighting uh, directors and things like that. So a lot of the large scale projects that, you know, become a sort of thing that OM always looks forward to doing and builds up to, towards doing, I think will have to change slightly. I think it's getting used to all the social distancing, like in, if we ever do come together again for any rehearsal, uh, how we space ourselves up and you know for the wind players especially uh, what's safe and what's not. For the string session they had to juggle between having two teams of string players coming in for only one rehearsal each and like and of course it was mandatory that everyone was spaced one meter apart. I could tell that from having everyone spaced out so far was it wasn't really that comfortable for them and it was just and it was like trying to do more with less people, which, which was something very really unfamiliar for most of us. With how the social distancing goes about, um, how many seats you have to, you have to space out. Um, I think even some articles were saying how like a, a, a ticket will cost four times more. So I'm assuming that like if a normal ticket costs 30 bucks, it will be like 120 bucks for a concert. And, and yeah, I think the numbers just wouldn't make sense. Um, and I think it probably among all these probably also still just the health, the, 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 the safety for everyone to convene to make music. Home is also a very social thing, you know, so keeping people connected through this period of time is also difficult because you can't actually gather, you know, and of course uh, our audiences have to, you know, how do we reach out to them? With COVID-19 prompting a huge wave of digitalization of media, especially with all these um, you know, uh, split screen covers and like uh, having, having everyone pre-recorded and then mixed together onto one big screen being kind of the new norm for this. I think trying to get an audience back into the halls, into the physical space itself would be rather tricky as I think when, especially when people are starting to get used to this new form of media of, of like how music is being portrayed. Yeah. As an art group, I think we're definitely not alone. I mean, we face um, universal challenges internationally with our orchestras. And um, I think some of the challenges will be definitely how to engage audience and the community in a different way. But that challenges also provides uh, uh, different types of opportunities for us, for us to really rethink about our path model and also to innovate as, a, as new ways of reaching out to more audiences. In a way that when we go virtually, uh, it actually makes some things more accessible to the public. So I think this will be one of our challenges to see how we can still continue to keep these um, big projects, but in a small scale, but still keeping the, the magnitude of it. And to still um, create the same, to give the audience the same experience as they can if they are watching a big production. You know, as with all the other orchestras worldwide, we probably have to look into embracing a little bit more other means of, um, you know, disseminating our music, uh, presenting our music to, to the rest of the world, and be it online or whether it's smaller scale concerts in smaller scale venues. And I think up to, you know, whenever this pandemic might last, I think this will be a challenge for everyone to, to deal with. It's very important that the orchestra is made up of non-professional musicians, right? So the drive and the passion behind why the people play in OM is entirely different from a professional world. So my hope definitely uh, moving forward is that um, maybe people, you know, in this time when rehearsals and concerts can't happen and they almost 
I would say not realize, but uh, become more appreciative of the 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 importance of music making uh, is to them. And when they come back next time to play with Omer Rehazul Home, they'll be even more motivated, even more energized, you know, because they they realized, hey, I've really missed something so special. I've really missed something so important to me. Sometimes having a bit of distance from it, um, I guess, is is crucial to keeping that sort of spark, that sort of joy of music making, um, which I think is the essence of Om. So it's particularly important for Om moving forward. I think um, in the in the future. Yes, of course, I'm looking forward to having rehearsals again. Not just making music with my friends, but seeing everyone again, catching up, and of course, eating. <laughs> so of course, with safe distancing measures, we can't be very close to each other. But I think that actually brings out the beauty of music more. Because music is also about listening. And even though we are a distance apart from each other, we are forced to listen more to each other, and at the same time also look at each other more and establish more eye contact and feel each other while we're playing. Even though with all the new restrictions that has to be imposed, such as like the limiting of the maximum capacity per plex in a in a venue, and like maintaining social distancing regulations, I think we can definitely pull through and come together. Yeah, I think definitely looking forward to being back at rehearsals. Uh, in fact, we have one tonight. Mm. Uh, slightly like the first anxious. One, first one for you? Yeah, slightly oh, okay. anxious. Yeah. Oh, okay. it, it would, it's not the first one for me. Uh, but I guess with all the new distancing measures in place, mm. it's probably going to be very different from mm. what we are used to. I remember um, I, I started having rehearsals maybe a week or two ago. And not having played with people for such a long time. <laughs> it definitely felt very strange. I was like, right. where is all this sound coming from? You know? And then like the sensitivity to blending, playing together. Is it very it's like wow. Yeah. It was it took a while for it to come back. Yeah. So and today's rehearsal tonight would be the largest group I've been involved so mm -hmm. far since the pandemic happened. So mm -hmm. yeah, looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to the upcoming rehearsals for the recording project in August. I think many of us were quite surprised that all managed to put something together because of all the restrictions that were in place. Uh, and it will be a smaller group with just the strings, but I think we'll be quite excited to play together too.